Hey guys, what's going on? Today I want to give you an update on the recent recalls on the very popular heartburn medication, Renitidine, which goes by the brand name Zantac. And this video is current as of September 30th, 2019. So I made a video about a week ago talking about how the FDA made announcements on a potential human carcinogen being found in Renitidine products. But in that video, I had said that no recall of the products have been issued yet. However, that has now changed. There has been a recall on some renitidine capsules. And then there has also been a recall on tablets sold over the counter at Rite Aid, Walmart, and Walgreens pharmacies. So this is becoming a more serious issue as time progresses. Now, before I get too into the video, I want to say that not all products have been recalled. It's only certain manufacturers, so this recall may not affect you at all. Uh, but that may change in the future, so just watch out for any new information. Today I will cover two separate recalls. I'll discuss an announcement that came from CVS just today. I will discuss what defect that they have found in these products, and then I will show you the pictures of what the renitidine products look like. My name is Tyler, and I'm a pharmacist with Pharmacy Update. And also, at the end of the video, I will let you know what you should do per the FDA. So let's get into it. So first off, I want to cover some background information on this issue. A little over two weeks ago, there was an announcement from the FDA concerning ranitidine. Uh, the FDA came out and said that they had conducted some tests on samples of ranitidine and they did in fact find low levels of the probable human carcinogen NDMA. And carcinogen just means that if taken for a long period of time, it could potentially cause cancer. NDMA is one of the substances they have found in some of the Valsartan and Losartan recalls of the past few years. Now an important point I want to say is that according to the FDA, these levels of NDMA are barely above that of some foods that we eat. So they did not seem to be too worried about it. However, they were challenged by a pharmacy that completes their own testing. If you want some more information on all of that, check out my other video on the topic. I'll leave it in the description below. But anyway, since this announcement from the FDA, there have been two recalls, which we'll discuss shortly. And besides the recalls, there's also been distribution halts from companies just as a precaution and Health Canada, which is basically the FDA of Canada, they halted all distribution of renitidine products in Canada, uh, but from my understanding, the FDA has not done this yet. And there was a quote from the FDA's Center for Drug Evaluation and Research Director. Uh, she had said, we are continuing all investigation along with our international counterparts, and we will keep the American public informed of any additional recalls as well as the potential risks from taking ranitidine products. So what I get from that is there is a possibility that more recalls could happen in the near future. The first recall was announced on September 23rd of 2019 and this was by Sandoz. This recall in particular only affected ranitidine capsules and from my experience, it seems the majority of people take the tablets. Um, but if you do take ranitidine capsules, I will show you pictures of what they look like here shortly. And only certain lots were recalled. There were 14 total lots. So you may not be affected by this, even if you do have a product. Then a couple days later, we get a recall notice from uh, Apotex. And this particular recall only affects products that were sold over the counter. However, these tablets went to three very popular pharmacies. These tablets were distributed to Rite Aid, Walgreens, and Walmart. And Apotex is saying that they are issuing this recall just on a precautionary basis. And I'll show you what the pictures of the boxes look like here shortly. From my understanding, the company is recalling all in-date products. So basically, if you have one of these products I show you later on, it has been recalled and you will want to investigate what you need to do. Now, the company did provide a number you can reach. However, this is only for people that bought directly from Apotex itself. 
So it's probably not too helpful. I'll share that phone number here shortly. And this announcement actually came out just today from CVS. CVS has decided to pull all Zantac and Ranitidine products off of their shelves. In my opinion, they are just trying to be proactive in case the FDA does decide to recall more Ranitidine in the future. So they are just doing this on a precautionary basis. And they did make it clear in their announcement that the products had not been recalled. And the company also says that if you did purchase one of these products at their stores, you can return it to them for a refund. So now I just want to quickly go over the substance that they have found in these products, and that is NDMA. You might be surprised to find out that the toxic substance is found in many common foods, such as cured meat, fish, beer, and also tobacco smoke. So there is an acceptable level of NDMA that you can take per day without getting any ill effects. But the concern is, is that these ranitidine products contain higher levels than that acceptable level. And that is what the issue is. As we discussed, it is classified by the EPA as a probable human carcinogen, which again means that it probably does cause cancer, especially if taken at higher doses for a long period of time. There has not been studies done in humans for obvious reasons, but they have done some animal studies to study its toxicity. So in these animal studies, it has been found to be a very toxic substance when given in high doses, and it's especially toxic to the liver. They also found that rats exposed to low levels of NDMA for a long period of time did develop cancerous tumors on their liver. Again, this has not been studied in humans, but it can be inferred from these animal studies that it is toxic to humans. And during my research, I found some articles that said NDMA has been used as a poison before. Someone used NDMA to try and poison someone else. There is actually a well-documented case where a husband tried to poison his wife by putting NDMA on jam and giving it to her. And interestingly enough, she did later die from liver failure. So the substance is definitely not something you want to take in doses higher than the acceptable level. Alright guys, with all that being said, I want to show you pictures of what the products look like. I'll start off with the capsules from Sandoz, and then I'll move on to the OTC products that were distributed to Rite Aid, Walmart, and Walgreens. So here we go. First, we have Ranitidine 150 milligram capsule. This is sort of an orangish, brownish looking capsule, and it has a GG614. So I just take a good look at that. Okay. Next is the Ranitidine 300 milligram capsule. And the best I could do for this one was the bottle label, uh, but you can make out some of the details, uh, the capsules right here. It basically looks to me to be the exact same thing as the 100 milligram capsule, but this has a GG615 instead of a GG614. So, as you can see, 614 on this one. And if you can see that right there, that appears to be a 615. So it is a very subtle difference. Okay, now we will move on to Apotex products distributed to pharmacies. And this was really the best I could find. This is what the box would look like. And here is what the bottle looks like right here. And if you look here, you can see a picture of the tablet. It is pretty small. But these were distributed to Rite Aid pharmacies. Okay, next we have Ranitidine 150 milligrams, uh, the Cool Mint version. Here is the box, as you can see. And you can see on the box there a picture of the tablet. So this tablet is blue. 
okay? Moving on from Rite Aid to Walmart products. Here is the box of the Equate brand, uh, Renitidine 150, uh, that you can find at Walmart. Looks very similar to the tablet we've seen in the first Rite Aid picture. Okay. And here is another box that can be found at Walmart. And this is a blue tablet that is similar to the Cool Mint one from Rite Aid. You can see it right there. Now finally we will move on to Walgreens products. This is the Walzan brand marketed by Walgreens. And once again the tablet looks very similar to the earlier ones. You can see it right here. And finally we have the Walzan 75 milligram Renitidine. This tablet is the only 75 milligram product that has been recalled and you can see what that product looks like right here. Just very quickly here is the number you can contact if you bought Renitidine tablets directly from Apotex, which I'm thinking is not very many people. If you purchase the Renitidine from a retailer, I'm guessing you will need to contact the store to see what to do. There really isn't a recommendation for these patients. Now on to my final topic. What should you do if you have these products? Well, if you have a recalled product, you'll likely want to set up a return. If you take a ranitidine in general that was not included in these recalls, uh, should you still be worried? Well, according to the FDA, they currently do not call for people to stop taking Zantac or ranitidine. According to their initial findings, the levels of NDMA are very low, and in their opinion, does not warrant enough to call for a complete stop of Zantac or Renitidine products. Now if you don't necessarily like that answer, they do urge you to speak with your doctor about possibly switching to a different drug for heartburn. If you are taking it over the counter, the FDA says that there are other options you can try. Um, and I'll get into a little bit more detail. Uh, so this last point here is just my recommendation. There are other medications that are in the same drug class as ranitidine or Zantac. Two of these drugs are famotidine or brand name Pepsid and the other is cimetidine or brand name Tagamet. Honestly between these two I would prefer famotidine to cimetidine uh, because it does seem like cimetidine has more drug interactions and also more side effects when compared to famotidine. And that's just my personal opinion. But as always, just talk to your doctor or pharmacist before making any medication changes so they can make sure if it's a safe option. Well, that's all I have for today, guys. I want to thank you for watching. If you felt that this video was helpful or informative, I would appreciate a like. If you'd like to stay up on the latest pharmacy and medical updates, such as this one, please subscribe to my channel. I will for sure be on the lookout for any more Zantac recalls, and I'll let you guys know when I find anything out. So I'd like to thank you guys again, and have a great day.